So, who here, and shout it out if you know the answer, what's the best attitude? Positive. Positive. Gratitude. We just heard about it. <laughs> gratitude is the best attitude. So let's show some gratitude for Lisa for putting this together. Yeah. For the, for the amazing speakers we've got so far. These have been amazing speakers. So let's show them some round of applause. And last but not least, for you guys. You guys came out here for Tony Robbins, yet you're here to grow, to pro proceed, to evolve with each other. We don't need Tony Robbins. We just need to show up. Like my good friend Carlos says, you show up to blow up, and we're here to blow up tonight. So thank you all for coming. Awesome. Who here would like to learn how to turn our dreams into a reality? Good. You're in the right place. That's what I'm going to show you how to do. I'm actually going to give you strategies to turn your dreams into a reality. I want you to stand up. First one, you oh, shake it up. Oh. All right. Now. Remember when Tony guided you and you saw that dream, you saw these instances where you in the future, you've already created this dream. Was that a different person or was that you now? Was that a different person? Yeah. Different person? Okay. I want you to put your arms in the air right now because you already won. You created it. You already won. Make your move. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Wait, the loudest has the best dream. Make your move. Yes! Yeah. If you don't have one, put someone to your left. I'll be your left. Turn around, face their back. What? Okay, face what? their back. Put your hand up here. And smack their ass and say, you uh, got this. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to smack my ass. Mike, you, you got this. this. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, Joseph. All right, all right. Okay, you can sit down and keep it on. <laughs> Now we're talking, now we're talking. <laughs> so, we've got some dreams to build, guys. We've got some dreams to build. So I'm gonna tell you a story about a guy I knew. He's not with us anymore. But there's a book actually being published about him. And he had a rough upbringing. Who here has ever had pain and loss and hardship and challenges? Anybody? Yep. Any, um, what, five of you? If you're lying about this, you lie about other things too. <laughs> Something I've learned is that we all do. All of us. And every time I hear someone, well, well, I've gone through this. Well, I've gone through this. No one's challenges is any harder than anyone else's. Because I'll tell you what, the hardest thing you've ever gone through is the hardest thing you've ever gone through. Guess what? Same with the other person. So now you're both going through the hardest thing you've each gone through. So it equals out. So, this guy I knew, he grew up, his father was a drug addict, terrible father. I don't think he ever judged him for it once he grew up and found out that, you know, he just lost his way, just like some people do. There was drugs, his mother ended up with another drug addict. She's an amazing mother, filled with love, but she ended up, you know, lost with uh, her choices in men. And this guy was abusive abused him physically and verbally. Not the greatest role model. Mm. You know, some people have really good role models. And, you know, this guy could have used an excuse saying, I didn't have a great role model. I had this guy. But he didn't define himself by that. So, he was abused. He ended up in the family business of growing pot. <laughs> <laughs> and he was doing all right for himself. He was doing all right for himself. He, he grew pot, you know. It was pretty cool. He was a little badass, a little gangsta, right? How cool is that? But he knew he wanted more. He saw his mother stuck with someone because, and she always told him, I can't leave him because I don't want to end up on the streets. She was stuck to this guy because of money. That was a powerful lesson for this guy. He decided he never wanted money to define where he is in life. So he decided he wanted to take control and become an entrepreneur. And he ended up becoming an entrepreneur. At 21 years old, after growing a bunch of pot, he bought his first house. But it was at 21 years old. You know, that's, that's pretty cool, right? 22, he's like, okay, I'm done growing pot. And he started a business. He started a landscaping business. 22 years old, that's pretty good. Ran it for six years. Now this guy, 
was so special. But he refused to share his beauty, his gifts, because he thought they were a curse. And I thought, I thought that was so heartbreaking. I was the only one who knew him this way. I knew his true beauty. I knew, who, I knew everything about him. And it broke my heart to know that this man of such beauty would prefer to people please and let people in society dictate who he was. He spent his life being the person that everyone else wanted him to be. Anyone here ever people please? There we go. If you lie about this, you lie about other things. <laughs> so he people pleased. So he created this business. It wasn't his passion, it wasn't his purpose. He, at 26 years old, owned his own house for seven years, owned and ran a successful business for six years, was married and had children. Do you think this guy was looked up to? People looked up to him. They thought his life was perfect. I knew otherwise. He was miserable. He was hurting. He felt defeated in life because he had all these things and it didn't make him happy. And we've heard about that a little bit today, right? Those things didn't make him happy because he wasn't being himself. He wasn't authentic. And every relationship he had built in his life wasn't based on a place from authenticity. So it all felt fake. So, after he got to this point where it was just tearing him up inside that he wasn't being himself, and he had all these things, but he wasn't happy, he decided, maybe I should be myself. May 15th, 2015, he made a post on Facebook and he told the world about me and I told the world about him and he shared that he was me and I shared that I was him. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I was that boy and that was a scary life living with all these thoughts in my head that I'm not being who I am. I'm being someone that the world wants me to be. And I, I tried to get all these things to make me happy. If I'm successful, I'll be happy. If I have love, I'll be happy. If I have this, I'll be happy. But I learned that until you are true to yourself and you're authentic, you can never be happy, guys. It's not until you accept who you truly are that the magic happens. Woo! Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I wanted that magic. And I didn't know that that's what was going to do it. And I stepped into the unknown, and it sucked. <laughs> it sucked for two years. I lost everything, everything. My house, I sold my house, made nothing off it. Sold my business, left with debt. My wife at the time took my two kids, and I did the unselfish move of signing on a, on a separation agreement saying, I only want access so I can rebuild my life. I didn't want to put them in a position where I had to focus on myself. I had to be selfish and rebuild. So I signed off on Axis, and my wife at the time took full advantage and tried to take them away from me. I lost all my friends. I was a tough guy. I put this, this major persona on, and I was a fighter. I was in the tough crowd, grew up in the country. So when I told my friends, and you know, I smoked pot back then, and I sat down with 10 of them. And again, I was popular. Everybody loved me. I had my shit together. So I was, oh my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had my stuff together. <laughs> so I, I sat down with each and every one of my friends and I rolled a joint like I got some real big news I gotta tell you. And I'd start like trembling and shaking. <sighs> I'm transgender. <sighs> I'd be like, what the f did you just say? Yeah, transgender. And all of them were like, it's okay, it's okay, we'll support you. Until I made that public post and they were guilty by association. Mm. Oh, I don't know him, I don't know her, I don't know it, I don't know what the f you know. Everyone bailed. Everyone fucking bailed. I had one close friend who stuck around. He lives with me, he's my best friend. He's my soul brother. He actually lives in my house. We mastermind together, it's amazing. But everyone bailed. My family, my family, my mom was the only one who actually knew me because as a kid, 
I was, you should call me gentle soul. I was sensitive. I was effeminate. I played Barbies across the street with the girls instead of hockey, road hockey with the boys. So all throughout my life, she said, if you ever have to come out, I will support you. I mean, mom, you're fucking crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. But she knew me as a kid, so she knew the true me. So she supported me. But she also lost her son. I killed him. That was a tough thing, and I felt that. Not only that, but I had to be selfish for the next few years. And she called me selfish. And I said, yeah, I'm selfish with you. I had to focus on me. And I had to build my dream from scratch. I had to go through this next few years redefining who I am. If there's anyone that can prove that you can define your dreams, it's me. I defined my own gender. <laughs> Woo! Yes. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thank you so much. I I looked at my vision, my dreams, my purpose, and I said, this is what I want. This is who I am. I didn't look back and say, I was abused. I was hurt. I was a fighting tough guy. I was I was this, I was that, so that's who I'm stuck being. How many people have ever said, well, I failed at this once, so I'll fail it again? Mm. Anyone? Hands? Yeah. 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 A lot of us do that. We define ourselves by who we were, or we define ourselves by who we are now. Well, what do you mean? We are this person right now. That's who we are right now. Yeah, I broke the rules. <laughs> I define myself by who I'm going to become. You guys had those dreams? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah then be that person. I teach people to look at that person. When you closed your eyes and you saw that person, were they different than who you are right now? Do they walk differently? Do they talk differently? Do they dress differently? Then what the fuck are you waiting for? Dress differently. Walk differently, talk differently. Be that person now. What are you waiting for? Someone to go, you can do it. You got this, you're gonna be okay. This is on you guys. You define your dreams. Three years ago was when I was finally coming into my own, starting to feel who I was. It's like, okay, I'm going to be okay. So I used to spend an hour looking in the mirror, looking like, I'm going to fucking do this. This is scary. Anyone ever look in the mirror for a little while and go, holy crap, life, man, life's crazy. How am I going to do this? Am I alone in this? Well, I used to do that. And then I would start to see that person I wanted to be. And all I knew wasn't how I was going to do it. I just knew I would fucking do it. Three years ago, I was starting to come into my own. And I was on welfare, single mother of two. <coughs> I fought really hard. And because my ex was going through alcohol and stuff, I won. I got sole custody. Oh. My kids. <laughs> the courthouse knew me by name because I was there every fucking day. Because I owned a business, they could give me legal aid. I fought. In the middle of all this craziness, I fought for my kids. They were my why. You know, right, Kelly? Mm. You know, they're your why. So I fought, I fought, I fought, I fought while I was going through all this stuff. It was crazy. And uh, yeah, the court, <laughs> courthouse knew who I was. I was there self-representing, talking to duty counsel, filling out affidavits, emergency motions to keep her from moving away and changing their last name and doing all this stuff. So when it came down that, uh, you know, she was caught drinking around them, they're like, we know that she's going to take care of these kids. And when I saw myself in my vision, at the time, I only had access to my kids. I was a mess. But I saw myself as a mother, as an amazing, excellent mother that created a life that these kids could be proud to grow up in. They're living it now because I created it. years ago at this point I'm on welfare but again not defining myself by that but I was still hurting it sucks I've always been driven I'm an achiever anyone here an achiever <laughs> yeah yes. yeah we're achievers so we, we want more we want more we want to prove ourselves we want achievements we want accolades we want love we want all that good stuff so that's who I was defining myself by and I started to realize I needed help 
I needed help. It was a big turning point. It's like, look what I've done. But I can do more. And I know I can help people. I know I have a story. How do I do this? As soon as I, as soon as I figured out I needed help, I started, okay, I need to manifest some help because I don't know where to go. <laughs> I don't know who to look for, who could help my crazy ass. <laughs> <laughs> so I just started thinking about it. I started thinking about, I need someone. I know that if I have support from someone, I could do some fucking great things. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I look up to Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I found someone who mentored me for free. His free mentorship has been pivotal in me giving free mentorship. I only do it for the people I know need it. Not the people who are like, oh, yeah, free mentor, cool, cool. No, I connect with certain people. The people who have been hungry. The people who know they have greatness within them. Not the people who are wondering if they have greatness within them. The mm. people who know and they just need some help and some guidance. So this guy changed my life in one call. One call. This is what I'm going to teach you. He's like, do you believe in the law of attraction? I'm like, yeah. I manifested this. <laughs> He's like, okay, so how much energy do you put into the things you manifest? I'm like, a lot. I think about it a lot. I got the vision boards. I'm grateful and I, I visualize and I got my hands around the steering wheel of my cool car. And I'm in the house. I've got the loving relationship with the man of my dreams. I've got, I've got it there. Okay, so how much time do you put into manifesting one thing? Ooh, a lot. A lot of time, a lot of energy. Okay, so then what? There's 50 things you want? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of stuff. So how do you stay consistent with it? I'm not, not great at staying consistent with it. <laughs> it's like, well, how about I simplify it for you? I'm like, please, please simplify it for me. Who here would like me to simplify the law of attraction for you? That's it. Is that it? Yes. Yes. Make your move! Yes. Yes. Make your move! Yes. Yeah. Let's manifest our dreams. He said, okay, what's your purpose in life? Oh, I know I want to help people. It's like, perfect. We, how do you want to help people? Well, I want to be the light in their darkness. Define that. I want to give people such massive breakthroughs that they know how to now move forward into creating their best life and being their best self. Okay, what happens when you start doing that? Oh, no one's ever asked me that. You actually care about my dreams? Hmm. And I want you guys to ask yourself. Ask yourself, what are your goals? And then I want you to ask yourself, What's next after you accomplish those goals? And then guess what? What's next? That's where the dreams live. That's where the dreams live. So he asked me all these questions, and I went deeper and deeper and deeper, and I realized that I wanted to help students coming out of high school, because that's where I can have the biggest impact. I wanted to teach them mindset, wealth and abundance and prosperity, not fucking geometry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and that's where they need it. <laughs> That's where they need it. They need to come out of school ready for life. I don't want life to get, man, when I'm old, a young mind who hasn't had life kick the fucking ass yet, oh, it's beautiful. And they come, come at life ready and hungry and ready to do what's needed. So I realized that that's where I'm gonna have the biggest impact. And he's like, okay, what's your passion? Oh, I'd love to travel. It's like, okay, passion, purpose, put them together. And I like created this purpose sphere, I call it. My purpose sphere where whenever I need to think about this, I look at the sphere full of amazing beauty that I define my life by. Me traveling the world, taking in all these different cultures, meditating with Buddhist monks, taking it back to where I share, where I share my gifts, where I share my love, where I share my hope, where I share my ability to instill passion, belief, vision, and build dreams. Who here is a, build, a dream builder? Yes! yes. Others build their dream. You want to make impact? Yeah. Build someone's dream. Nobody asks about their dream. You know what people ask? You want to join my team? You want to buy my product? Don't fucking try and sell someone. Build genuine relationships. Actually give a crap about them. They'll never forget you. If you ask them more about, okay, ask them about their goals, and then say, well, what's next after you accomplish that? Not what if you accomplish it. After you accomplish your goals, what are you going to do? They're going to go, oh, well, you know, no one really asked me. I don't know. They're going to tell you. And then you go, oh, yeah? What about after that? They will never forget you because nobody asks them that. 
And all it takes is asking them a question from genuine care, unconditional love, without you needing them to say yes or no to a product or a service or whatever you're selling or promoting or a person you want to put in their lives. Genuinely care about their dreams, they'll never forget you. And you can change their lives just by building their dreams. Who's a dream builder? Yes. Yeah. You can go out and you can build some dreams. <laughs> when you do that, when you start to build your purpose sphere, you start to magnetize. And this is where the true manifestation happens. My mentor told me, said as soon as you have this purpose sphere, and he didn't call it a purpose sphere, that's my thing, right, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> he said as soon as you really focus on that, you're gonna start to magnetize everything. The people you need to get there. The ideas you need to get there. The opportunities you need to get there. I'm like, okay, well, how do I really put this in work? He said, I'm glad you asked. And this is what I'm gonna teach you. You ever heard of alpha and beta thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he said, beta thoughts are the lowest form of wavelength you're putting out. I've translated that as ego. It's all up here, conscious thought. All conscious thoughts are questions. Who, what, where, when, why, how? Every thought, it's you asking yourself a question. A question means that you don't know the answer. When you don't know the answer, do you feel love or fear? Yeah. Fear. When you live in question and doubt, do you love your life or do you fear your life? Fear. Do you fear your life? Something I've learned is that we're divine spirits, people. You believe in God, you believe in the universe, you're an apostle or an avenger, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we're divine spirits. Yeah. Who here agrees? Yes. yes. We're divine spirits. As divine spirits, we were gifted things like intuition. Here's an example. Who here has ever asked for someone's opinion even though they knew the answer already? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> How did that happen? How did you know an answer you shouldn't have known? You're connected to some universal knowledge, people. But we have a hard time connecting with that because the ego goes, yeah, but who, but why, but where, but when, but how, how? You don't need to know how, people. Something I've learned is that we know the answers. We know everything we need to know. And someone's gonna say, well, what if we have to learn something? Well, then you knew you had to learn it. Hmm? Oh, where's the mic for me? <laughs> you know everything you need to know. So I was like, well, then why am I even thinking anymore? He was like, there you go. He was like, there you go. You know. Stop thinking, start knowing. I said, okay, well, how, how do I do this? How do I put this together? He said, okay, you got these beta thoughts, right? And you got the alpha. The alpha is the knowing. The alpha is the instincts, the intuition. We have 70,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of opportunities to disrupt and replace with the knowing, with your purpose. So I want you guys to every time you notice yourself thinking, well how, well who, well why, all these questions. You do it 70,000 times a day, I'm sure you can pick a couple of them and disrupt them. <laughs> disrupt them and visualize your purpose sphere. Put yourself there in your purpose sphere. And what you begin to do is program your instincts. Your instincts are now being programmed to pick things out that you weren't consciously looking for. Now your instincts say, I got this cause. I need to help people. I need to change children's lives. I need to, you know, I need to go to the kids' hospital. I gotta rock babies. I gotta take care of animals that can't take care of themselves. Whatever your purpose is. You're now treating your instincts as the guiding, the, the heat-seeking missile. You're programming it. Now the heat-seeking missile is automatically guiding all the fins to heat-seek to your vision, to your purpose. You're programming yourself. You don't need me to do it. You just need to start replacing all your beta thoughts with your knowing, your vision, your purpose, your, your desires within that. And all of a sudden, things start to be magnetized here and you see things. Let's, let's not talk about the voodoo magic behind it. Let's talk about the science of it. When you're programmed like that, all of a sudden, something that would just kind of pass by your peripheral, you see it bright as day because you're programmed to see it now. You're programmed to hear something and it stands out. You said 
You're looking for someone to help these children? I'm right here. This, that's the science behind it. The voodoo behind it is magical too. It all works together. So he said, within, within you know, if you use this quick, you know, use it seriously and you replace all these thoughts with your alpha, your knowing and your vision, your purpose, you're gonna start to live in the alpha and you're gonna magnetize the people, the places, the ideas. Within two weeks, I went to a job interview. Again, bro, welfare, single mother. Went to a job interview. Met someone who, my instinct said, you gotta add her to Facebook. I added her to Facebook. She posted a picture with this multi-millionaire who had his arm around her. I was like, holy crap, I know him. I used to look up to him. She knows him? And I just commented on it. Commented on the post on Facebook. <coughs> Two days later, he messaged me. He's like, Sarah, nice to meet you. I'm like, hi. <laughs> and he had a conversation with me. He's like, by the end of it, he's like, you're pretty cool. I'm having my first Canadian business acquisition meeting in my house today. He lived in Ottawa with me. And I would like you to be there. I'm like, I have plans. They're canceled, I'm coming. Mm. I got to hear about this ground floor launch of a business that he launched and I got to be his under his wing this was a, within two and a half weeks all of a sudden the course of my life had completely shifted and I was now a launching leader became his top recruiter in this network marketing company that was brand new and just launched within two and a half weeks of shifting a few little, a few little things about how I think Boom! And from that day on, man, everything has just been changed. I'm not in that company anymore. I moved on to another one. That within eight months, I was a six-figure passive income earner. Kaboom! From welfare to six-figure passive income earner. I started opening up my coaching business. I started writing a book. That book about the guy I told you about. It's called Not Born This Way. I started writing that, and I'm not a writer. In fact, I don't have patience for writing. <laughs> I used to keep a diary, and at the end of the night, I'd be writing for an hour because I'm, per, you know, perfection details. I gotta have it all, and by the end of it, it's like, oh, done, finally. <laughs> so I started to like really dislike writing, but I knew I had to share my story, especially because Les Brown told me himself. You wanna hear some manifestation? I've been listening to Les Brown. Who here knows Les Brown? Woo! Yeah. yeah. Incredible, right? Well, as a teenager. I heard about his story with Mr. Butterball. I was like, I'm never taking no for an answer. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to make sure whatever I want to do, I'm going to keep going until I get it. And I thought to myself, I want to be on stage like him. I want to inspire the masses. So I, I visualized that a lot. Well, two years ago, this second company I got in that I became a six-figure earner in, well, he spoke at some of the events. And one event that I went to, when he got on stage, the guy who brought me in, he grabs my arm. I look up and there's Les Brown on stage. I'm like, oh, amazing. Lunchtime, everyone leaves the, the, the auditorium or whatever, the, the place. I'm looking at my notes and I'm like, I'm taking life serious at this point. I'm like, I'm creating, I'm creating, I'm creating. Everyone's out of there. I look over in front of the stage, Les Brown and two people. Hi, Les. How are you? I've been listening to you for so many years. He's like, girl. You got charisma. You should be on stage. I'm like, I know, I know. <laughs> He's like, here's my email. I want you to email me. What? What? God, his email was like the highlight of my life. But there were so many more highlights to come with him. <laughs> About uh, a month later, I built the biggest team in Canada in this business. In a country that wasn't fully launched. Two provinces were launched. Shipping of this coffee was 60 bucks a tub. So I would drive across the border, pack my trunk with a bunch of coffee, drive it across with one package in the front saying, I just picked up one package of coffee. I did this for a year, once a week for a year. I broke some rules. Remember, I used to grow a lot of pot. <laughs> <laughs> so and I did that and I created this massive, like everyone in the company was like, what is she doing? How is she doing this? And I created leaders who came from solutions, not excuses. And we built and we built. And when we went to another conference, I met with the CEO. I was like, listen, we got to have an event in Ottawa. We created the biggest team in Canada. You got to come to Ottawa. You got to bring Les Brown. I created an event that Les Brown come to, came to Ottawa for. It was amazing. It was amazing. Manifestation, guys, I'm telling you, is so powerful. He came to Ottawa. So I went and picked up the top earner in the company, brought him to the hotel. 
Who's checking in at the front desk? Anyone guess? Les Brown. Les Brown. <laughs> I'm like, Les, welcome to Ottawa. He cuts me up, he's like, girl, you got charisma. <laughs> I'm like, I know. <laughs> I know. I emailed you. You didn't respond. <laughs> he's like, oh, where's your business card? I'm like, here. Gave him the business card. The whole event, I was running up to him, like, meet my friend, meet my friend. Do you need coffee? Do you need water? What do you need, Les? And I started talking to him, connecting with him as much as I could. Giving value, value, value. How can I help? What can I do? Offering advice from Ottawa, challenging him, you know, making myself known, being bold, standing out, being loud, being hungry. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the event, I start driving home, and my phone rings. I pick up, it's like, Miss Charisma. <laughs> I'm like, it's fucking brown? <laughs> We had this like you know small chat like how'd you how'd your team like it was it good did you like my singing like no I didn't like your singing stick to your day job like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end of it it was like okay well you have a wonderful day and like you too actually wait Les I gotta take advantage of this I have a story and I don't tell people this story that I'm telling you I was too ashamed to tell it for a long time I didn't tell people I was transgender because I didn't want a label that didn't fucking define me I'm not, I'm not transgender. I'm a woman, but what defines me is social, fun, happy, beautiful, mother. I've got all, all kinds of awesome defining characteristics. Transgender is not one of them. And I told him this, and I told him my story, and I said, I know this story can help people, but I don't want it to define me. He said, you do have a wonderful story. In fact, I call it Stand Up With Him. He named my story. So I'm standing up with him right now. <laughs> he said, you've got to tell it. Like, I always thought to myself, i got to be successful first before I tell it, before I help people, before I do all this stuff. I said, girl, you know who Wayne Dyer is? I'm like, yeah, do you guys know who Wayne yeah. Dyer is? He said, I was supposed to have him on, a, on my talk show. And I pushed it off, and I pushed it off, and I pushed it off, and then one day I was like, i got to stop pushing it off. Called up, his assistant answers, says, Les, Wayne passed away two nights ago. He's like, oh my God. I'm like, whoa. He's like, do not wait. Tell your story. Be authentic. That's where the magic happens. Tell your story. I was like, my heart sank. I was like, holy crap, tell my story? Are you sure, Les? He's like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, okay. Next time I was set to see him was about a month and a half later. And one week before, I was asked to be on an interview because I was a top earner in this company. I was like, holy crap, is this, this the moment I tell my story and help people? I want to talk to Les first. <laughs> so I tried to reschedule it. No one would take my spot. So I figured out what I was going to say. I wrote it out. I was like, this is, this is heavy duty. i got to figure out what I'm going to say here. And I just I was nervous. I was so nervous. Oh, my God. Like, this is the first time I'm telling my story. Mm. And I just I did what I always do pictured who I want to be. That confident, powerful businesswoman powerhouse. So when I picked up that call for this conference call interview, I was in the zone, baby. <laughs> I was ready to go. And it was so great that this guy's interview of me was the highest playback <coughs> interview that he'd ever had. And it went amazingly. And nobody gave me backlash. Nobody judged me. And I helped thanked me for it because I was authentic and I was real and people thanked me for that. So next week, I call up Les as I get in the hotel. I'm like, Les, you in the hotel? Can I come up to your room? Went up to his room. I, sh I told him about it and he's like, so how'd it go? I'm like, I was nervous, but I did really good. He's like, no, 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 no. How did people react? <laughs> he's like, actually, it was the, the top playback interview. He's like, I want to hear it. I sent him the interview and next morning, I was like, so what'd you think? He's like, I want to hear it. Holy crap. He's like, you gotta write a book. I'm like, I'm not a writer. He's like, get ghostwriters then. Write your fucking book. <laughs> so I wrote my book. It's being published within the next month and a half, two months. In fact, thank you. Yeah. In fact, if, if anyone wants to read the first three chapters that have been edited, <laughs> Meet me after. I'll take. I'll take your email and I'll send you the first three chapters. Mm -hmm. That's just my gift to you. So, 
all this to say, and actually, you know, my, my coaching business, I launched four months ago, and it's booming. People are, every, every person I sign, I charge more and more. And I've taken on a couple free clients as well. The ones that I told you about, that I know that I see the magic, and I see that they're not in a position to pay $10,000. They're just, they need me. And I need them too. So, this to say that my life is so beautiful because I created a beautiful life in that purpose sphere. And I live my purpose every day. I'm living it right now. Remember, I didn't know how. I didn't know this was going to happen. I came to San Jose expecting UPW Tony Robbins. Mm. But I'm on stage? <laughs> I didn't know how this would happen. I just knew it fucking happened. So, I want you all to picture that purpose fear. And when your brain instantly says, well, how am I going to do it? You're going to say, I don't know how. I just know that. Come on. It will happen. Is that it? It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. Yes. Who here is a dream builder? Yes. Make your move. Yes. Make your move. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. All right, let's take a five-minute break, but you're not going to want to miss our next speaker.